I'm all prayed up. I'm all prayed up. I'm ready to meet my Savior. Eternal life is waiting in the by and by. I'm all prayed up. my feet Jesus a long, long time ago. Trust him in, he would see my soul. I walk and ride beside him, has got me on my way. No, he hit me when I need him pray. I'm all prayed up. I'm all prayed up. I'm ready to meet my Savior. Eternal life is waiting by and by. I'm all prayed up. My people never wait No doors going to ride When I die I'm all prayed up I'm all prayed up I'm ready to meet my Savior Eternal life is waiting by and by. I'm all prayed up. My faith will never win. No doors gonna see my door when I die. I ain't afraid of Satan and the wicked ways of sin. Give me that he could not go in. I'm gonna live with Jesus and face my different day. And it me that promise can't be. I'm all prayed up. I'm all prayed up. I'm ready to meet my Savior. Eternal life is waiting by and by. I'm all prayed up. I'm all prayed up. My faith will never wait. No doors don't come out of when I die. I'm all prayed up. I'm all prayed up. I'm ready to meet my Savior. Eternal life is waiting by and by. I'm all prayed up. I'm all prayed up. My faith will never wait. Don't go to the bottom when I die. Don't go to the bottom when I die. Don't go to the bottom when I die. When I die. When I die. I'm all prayed up. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one his, who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore she, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Micah 5, verses 2 through 5. Good morning, sisters and brothers in Christ. Welcome to all who love the Lord. Welcome to the Gold Country Community Parish. My name is Ruth Beckman. I will be your liturgist this morning. I'm a certified claim, uh, lay minister for the United Methodist Church. Joining me is George Beckman, who is also a lay minister, and he will be bringing our words of assurance and our message this morning, and Pastor Ellie will be lighting our first Advent candle. Once a year, our charge conference meets with our district superintendent, Blake Busick. It will be held via Zoom Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. Pastor Ellie sent the Zoom link to everyone in an email. Click on the link and join us. At the end of this service, there will be a short tutorial. Good morning, George. This is the first Sunday of Advent. The theme of the first Sunday is God's people. And later on, we'll be lighting the candle of hope. 
The Christ child came into this earth and he changed everything. He brought good news. News that we are all God's children, children of God. He invited us, each one of us, regardless of our defects, to join him in the wonderful inheritance of God. Today, we're going to stretch the idea of family and talk about the family of God. Our opening hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Join me in the call to worship. Keep awake. Christ, Christ is, is coming. coming. Wait for the Lord. Love, Love is coming. coming. Prepare the way. Hope, Hope is coming. coming. Worship the Lord. Christ, Christ is, is coming, coming soon. soon. Join me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. God of power and might, your majesty is greater than the highest mountain your glory more radiant than the summer sun. As the days grow dark and the sun's light wanes, warm our hearts with the radiance of your love that we might find our courage and walk by the light of the moon. Let us take a moment for personal confession. Hear these words of assurance. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Amen. Pastor Ellie will light our first Advent candle. Good morning, Ellie. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Hope is the promise of God to send light to a darkened world that brought hope to many who had once been without it. It's a time of hope, the Sunday in which we recall the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Now we light the candle of hope to sing and celebrate for God who has brought salvation to us all, the salvation promised and greatly to be praised is the Christ who came to give us a life of hope.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, as we move through this season of Advent, we come before you today in a spirit of hope and expectation. We praise you for your power, majesty, and authority. And thank you for the gift of coming into your presence. Through these weeks of Advent, we pray that we might be more aware of you, that we might live in expectation of all you will do through and within us. Show us how we make real your presence in the world through our action and attitudes. We pray in the name of Jesus, the coming one. Amen. Our special music is Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming, sung by the Atlanta, Georgia, Master Chorale. Our joys and concerns. David Granger reports that his brother Mike is home. He is still coughing but breathing okay. His wife continues to have a fever and their daughter's test came back positive. She is feeling fine but has no sense of smell. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise Let's be to God. God. Lord in your mercy, O oh God, God, hear our, our prayers. prayers. And the second one this morning is, Dear God, bless our church and its leaders as we meet virtually for our yearly charge conference. Lord, in your mercy, O oh God, God, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. If you have other joys and concerns, you may call or email me. Would you pray with me? Lord, Lord, all the earth groans under this pandemic. Under economic strife, under discord, Lord, comfort us. Let us pause from the news and the problems of life. Be our sanctuary. Fill us with hope. Lord, we ask for strength 
and safety for those toiling in the hospitals tending the sick, those driving the trucks to deliver our food, those in the fields harvesting that we might eat, for the grocery clerk standing on tired feet. Let us turn our heads to the advent of the child, the small child who will lead the calf and the lion. Bring peace on earth, goodwill to all people. But will God really dwell on earth? The heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, yet, yet give attention to your servant's prayer and my plea for mercy. Lord my God, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence these days. And may your eyes be open toward our homes, night and day. And now as we continue this worship, let each one watching feel your presence and the presence of our sisters and brothers. Let our love for one another fly across distances and give comfort. We ask all these things in the hope of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear God, as the church we are called to serve, our service begins by offering our lives to Christ and continues to the gifts we give that the church may continue to witness to the word of God. To you, O God, we offer our praise. For you, O God, we offer our gifts. Amen. Dear friends, the finance committees of both churches, all three churches, pardon me, and Pastor Ellie, thank you for your gracious giving and we ask you to continue as you can. Colfax people, if you have not sent in your pledge cards, there is still time. We will dedicate them this next Sunday. Our hymn of preparation is, What Child Is This?
Our scripture reading this morning is from Ephesians 1, verses 8 through 19. And he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having just having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who are the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possessions, to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his, and his incomparably great power for, thus, for us who believe. The word of God for the people of God. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Family. Someone said that you wouldn't hang around with these people if you weren't related to them. I'm not sure that's always true, but family is family. And, and part of it, I think, is in the raising. The traditions that we have that, that no one else may know about in quite the same way. And so we find ourselves reaching out to brother or cousin, to a sister that we haven't seen in years, haven't talked to in years. In today's scripture, Paul writes about us being brought into the family of God, having the same inheritance as those who were there before us. Would you pray with me? Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The word kingdom is not a typo, and there are three things we can learn from the word kingdom. First, kingdom has a definition, the full diversity and relationship of God's children. Like it or not, that means everyone is welcome in the family of God, even sinners, even sinners. For this definition, I'm going to hyphenate it as kin, K-I-N dash D-O-M, kingdom. We are all kin. We're related, made by God. We are sisters and brothers in this world. And here, here is the important part, we're loved equally by God and are children of God. Everyone, everyone. We don't get to choose our sisters and brothers because we are not the head of the household of God. We're children inherited, brought in by Christ, and given full privileges. Even sinners whose sins are a little bit worse than our own. Our second definition, this time we're going to spell it K-I-N-D-O-M, kindom. And it also has a definition. From the animal kingdom, we have these symbols. 
You know, the fox is cunning. The donkey is stupid. The mule is stubborn. And the jackal is tricky. For humans, this is the very root of prejudice. Y'all are the same. I mean, all y'all. All whites are such and such. All blacks are such and such. We know your kind. But we are not to be defined by gender or race or ethnicity. I don't know much about mules, but not all mules are stubborn. And not all German or Irish are stubborn. And all Scots are not cheap. And now we move to the third definition. It is spelled the same way, K-I-N-D dash O-M, which is the same spelling as number two, but here we're talking about a different definition of the word kind. Kind as in not mean. Kind as in compassionate. Now we're going to blend all three definitions together. And it goes like this. It goes like this. We are all children of God. God's children. And we've been adopted into the family of God. Jesus did this, and we become heir to God's gifts, just like Jesus, even to raise from the dead. We're kin. We are kin. In the family of God, we're called to be a kind of person, a type, if you will. We call this type Christian. The trouble is, sometimes we aren't very good at it. We miss the part that everybody is brother and sister on an equal footing in God's love. And when we miss the part about being sisters and brothers, we grow our prejudiced wings. We begin to group people, men, and women, and children, doctors, and lawyers, rich and poor, black and brown. We see people as a kind, not the kind type that we're called to be, but the other kind, the other kind, which is, you know, not our kind. And when that happens, when that happens, people aren't very kind, as in nice. We wage war against one another, against the other kind. Some mistreat Japanese people on the very side of seeing them because they think they're Chinese and they think that Chinese are the people that brought COVID in, that they're COVID carriers. And this isn't very kind. I'm going to end, end this sermon with a, with a story. I have a friend who is just one notch off agnostic. A nice person, a decent person, way more Christian than many Christians I know. And I will add an injured person, an injured person. This friend has a five-year-old, a little daughter who had a best friend, a neighbor. And the little girls loved to play with each other, loved each other. But the mother of this second child told my friend that while she thought my friend's daughter was very nice. She didn't want her daughter to play with someone who wasn't from a Christian home. I'm going to let that soak for a minute. 
She didn't want her daughter to play with a non-Christian. This seems to miss the kingdom, the family of God idea. It assumes that all agnostics are the same. And it broke my friend's daughter's heart. You see, this shows a five-year-old that she isn't good enough. We don't like her kind. How does a mother explain this to a five-year-old over and over? Because she kept asking. It, it can't be explained. It can't be. This event tells the little girl we aren't kin. It says, I know what you're like because you're not one of us. It broke my heart when I heard this. You know, that Christian neighbor didn't sell much Jesus that day. Not much selling of Jesus that day. You know, we wouldn't know Jesus if Jesus had stuck to his kind, the very holiest of people. We wouldn't know Jesus if Paul had stuck to his kind, only Jews. That Christian mother had a ripe harvest right in front of her. She could have won, not, not by preaching, but by showing what kind, as in type, of Christian she was, that she wasn't prejudiced. By being kind, nice, she would have shown that she was the Christ kind, the nice kind. And perhaps, in time, planted seeds, seeds of love, seeds of hope, seeds of kinship, seeds of advent, the inheritance into the kingdom of God. This advent, I encourage you to invite not only the Christ child in, into your heart, into your heart in a new way, but that you open your heart and welcome all into the kingdom of God. Start by sending a link to one of our services. Send it to someone who doesn't feel like they're in the kingdom. Don't do this randomly. Pray about it. With prayer, choose a service that has something that you think will have special meaning to that person. It has something special to offer. Spread the advent, the entrance of God into our world. And may God add wings to your offering. Amen. Our closing hymn is, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Shalom to you. Hold out your hands. Hold out your hearts. May the sun be warm and kind to you, the darkest night some star shine through, the dullest morn some radiance brew, and when dusk comes, God's hand to you. May the peace of Christ be with you and all whom you meet, now and forevermore. Amen. From Pastor Ellie and the leadership team, stay well and safe, everyone. Please go now and eat a couple cookies or other goodies. Think about your sisters and brothers in Christ. Lastly, call a couple of friends from church. If the line is busy, it means someone got there before you, so choose someone else to call. Stay connected. This week, I encourage you to invite not only the Christ child into your heart anew, send a link to our services to someone who doesn't feel that they are in the kingdom. Not randomly, with prayer, choose a service that has something to offer to this person. Spread Advent, the entrance of God, into their world. The tutorial for the, the, tutorial for the Charge Conference Zoom will follow the song, We Are Marching in the Light of God. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are get you into the Zoom meeting. I went to my email and I find uh, a message from Ellie and I believe Beth sent it later on, repeated it. And in that message, Ellie explains that there's going to be a charge conference, Zoom link below. But you have to go down a ways here because she got it from the conference. So down here there's a letter from Cindy Buna and here it is. It says, join Zoom meeting, 
and it tells you the time and all that here. When you click on that, if you already have Zoom installed, then everything's going to be okay. Um, if you don't have Zoom installed, lots of times it will say, do you want to do it just on the website? And if you do, that's fine. Or you can uh, download the, the Zoom app. It will say there, do you want to download it? I did. So I'm going to open it just to show you what happens. If you get there too early, um, it's telling me that meeting is not scheduled until December 1st. And, uh, and it says it's going to start at 9. We are not starting at 9. We're starting at 10. But Ellie has meetings beforehand. All right. So when Zoom comes up, when it first starts to work, there are some things that you're going to need to do. And first is, i got to get rid of that. Sorry. Go ahead. All right, down here in the lower left corner, notice it says, it's kind of small to read, but it says start video. If you don't do that, nobody can see you. And then you have to start audio. And if you don't do that, nobody can hear you. And it may be that uh, Blake will be saying, you know, George, you need to start your audio, or George, we can't see you. And then once the screen begins to fill, this is obviously not our church, but this is a Zoom with four people here. And as members begin to join, there will be more uh, little squares. They get quite small sometimes. Up here in the right-hand corner is a view, and right now it's showing that you're going to have a bunch of little squares. Now, once you're at this point, I suggest you go down again to the lower left. Now that you have your audio started, I would mute it. And when you click on that, this is just a picture, but when you click on that, it will say muted. And that keeps all of us from yakking all at once, or your dog barking and everybody having to listen to that, or the doorbell or anything else. Now, if it's your turn to talk, there are two ways to do it. You either can unmute yourself down here. Usually if I'm going to just say a few words I've been called on, I raised my hand perhaps, and Ellie calls on me, or uh, DS uh, Music uh, calls on me. If you hold down the space bar on your computer, just hold it down. While you're holding it down, you can talk. Then when you want to quit talking, you let up, and that saves you from having to go down here and mute and unmute. Uh, during a Zoom meeting, you'll begin to notice that if you do need to comment on something, or of course if you're seconding something, uh, it's good if you raise your hand and push down the space bar and say, I second. Lots of times a number of people say it at once, but the secretary uh, will get one of them, or maybe she'll have to ask, all right, who seconded? Um, at that point, I, if there were a whole bunch of voices, I would just let it go rather than, because if everybody says, I did again, uh, and it could be that Blake will have that information. So, there you are. So, to review, you go to your email, you go down to the Zoom meeting. Now, if you don't have uh, a computer that you think will do the Zoom, or you don't want to download the app, you can call in, and, uh, and when you call in, instead of a picture of you, it will just have your phone number there. And, uh, of course, if you don't want your phone number there, then you're really starting to become out of luck. But anyway, um, sometimes if you don't have a very good internet connection, you can just listen in, but, uh, and people will be able to hear you. And so you may want to mute your phone, because if your dog is barking, that is not really conducive to a good meeting. All right, so I hope that helps, and we'll see you all Tuesday at 10 o'clock.